Hi guys, this is Greg Doyle for Eat Sleep Boxing Repeat. Welcome to our weekly preview. Um, this is a short video where we will talk about this week's action, what is coming up and some of our thoughts on that. Delighted to be joined by ESBR's Dan. Dan, how are you today, sir? Yeah, I'm very good, Greg. Uh, looking forward to uh, doing the weekly review with you today. It's been a, well, obviously we had a good night of boxing last night as well, didn't we? and obviously there's a lot more stuff coming up now as you build up to August into September yes. after the quiet period. Absolutely, can't get enough of it. Um, Dan, first thing I want to talk to you about that takes place this weekend um, is on the Matrim card that's in Sheffield. And it's between probably Matrim's most promising prospect, mm -hmm. or very much right up there, Dalton Smith. He takes on Sam O'Mason for the British £140 title. Fight you're looking forward to? Any thoughts on that fight this weekend? Yeah, I think obviously, as you you you, you nailed the head, nailed the put, nail, it hit the nail on the head there. To be honest, with you, uh, Greg with Dalton, um, uh, when Eddie speaks about him, he calls him the best prospect that he's got coming up. Potentially, obviously, he always says a future world champion. He's pushing him massively. At the end of the day, he's eleven and all. Now he's headlining his own, in his own show, um, back out in Sheffield. But yeah, I think Dalton Smith uh, against Sam. It's a fight under the radar. Sam's coming off a, a win off from a journey. Remember, he's had his last two fights before that were against Pitt, K uh, K Prosperi, where he had a majority draw, and then then he lost the lost the rematch. Uh, but obviously, it's an opportunity. Everyone deserves an opportunity of the British British to title. To mean everyone steps up when it comes to fighting for the British title. So you never know what could happen. And it is boxing at the end of the day. But yeah, I definitely believe that Dalton Smith is obviously this. Next up and come in yeah. superstar within Matchroom's boxing. Like I said, they've had a lot, they've lost a few fighters lately, going to dip with so many promoters out there now and promotional companies. But I think Dalton Smith is uh, one of Matchroom's brightest prospects at the moment. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you. I think the kid's special. I think he's going all the way if he is promoted and managed correctly. Mm. Um, British titles, they're special. Um, sometimes you'll look at matchups and you'll think that's going to be one side, and it could be, but. The British title seems to bring things out of fighters and makes them go up that little level and make things more entertaining. And yeah, they leave everything on the line. But yeah, I'm with you, Dan. I think that um, Dalton Smith should win that fight. I think you stop um, Sam Mason. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a fight I'm looking forward to. Nothing better than a British title fight. And it's nice as well, isn't it? It's that father and son relationship as well. That's We've had many great... Many great father and son relationships in the past in British boxing when it is one of the greatest in and it's Welsh is Joe Kazagi and Enzo Enzo Kazagi. Do you know what I mean it's one of the I didn't know you were gonna say that? <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is one of the greatest father and son relationships in boxing. Yeah. You couldn't get a better connection between them two and it, and it's going. And do you mean the the Smith gym with uh, Dalton's dad is just flying at the minute? Yeah. Do you mean they got all the all the prospects in there? They've got world champions in Sonny Edwards, they've got Florian Marco in there now. Do you mean it's, it's yeah. the, the Smith gym is just flying at the end of the day at the moment? 100%. 100%. Dan, I want to move on and cover off a few more fights with you. Um, big one that I want to talk about is a fight that has been arranged two or three times. And for me, it's probably the fight of the weekend. Mm. Um, it's over in the States. And finally, Virgil Ortiz takes on Mikey, the problem, McKinson. What a fight, Dan. You looking forward to that one? Oh, yeah, definitely. I was looking forward to it, obviously, last time. Uh, McKinson has been... Quite avoided, if you ask me, in the division. Yeah. Um, he hasn't had the big British dust-ups as such that he could have had. Obviously, he's had the fight with Congo, uh, but it's not as... Uh, he's quite avoided in the division. And in fairness to him, like he's 22-0. He's stepping up against a monster in the uh, Virgil Ortiz. He's 18-0, 18 knockouts. I mean, he hasn't... Ortiz hasn't fought since 2021, obviously, due to the last pullout, etc. But it's, it's a massive fight and it's a massive opportunity. For me, I hope, obviously, if McKinson can beat Ortiz, I hope it maybe sets up the Conor Ben fight at the division because he's, every time Conor Ben has mentioned fighting McKinson, he said, no, oh, I don't know. But obviously, Conor Ben has got bigger fish to fry at the minute with um, the Eubank fight that looks like, I say bigger fish, but more money then um in the fight with with Eubank uh potentially being signed but I think it's a massive fight and a massive opportunity and some fan some people are going towards McKinson to beat Dorties. Mm -hmm. I know that um Lee then is obviously one of his man he's pushing him massively but I don't know Ortiz is special isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He is special. Yeah. He's 18 0 18 and 0 18 knockouts. It's gonna take a big, big performance to beat him. He's out in the States. Will that make a difference? Who knows? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a fight I'm really looking forward to, Dan. I think that the guys in the SBR team, they'll, they'll laugh with you about this. They always basically say about the time that I predicted McKinson beat Congo because he was such an underdog. I've never yeah. been more confident in a fight. But what I would say is that it's a fight I'm really looking forward to. I think it's a good fight um, for McKinson to take because if he wins, he instantly becomes a superstar. Definitely. He calls the shots in a lot of these fights going forward. Um I do like McKenzie. I just think for being slick and he is slick and he's a very, very good fighter. For me, he just gets hit a little bit too much mm. and you can't let Virgil Ortiz hit you. You just cannot let him hit you. And I think that might be the tailing factor in this fight. I think when it comes to ability, I think Michael McKenzie will be the superior boxer. But how many times is he going to get hit and can he stay away from Ortiz, which I don't think he can. And for me, I just think that Ortiz will get to him, but I think it'll be a very entertaining fight. And Can he catch him cold? Good. That's the question as well, because at yes. the end of the day, he's, he's going to have a bit of ring rust being out of the ring since 2021. Could, yeah, could McKinson upset the apple cart and come in like a freight yeah. train for the first couple of rounds, catch him cold and potentially get him out? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But if he gets cold, like you said, if, it's how many can he take? You're not going to take many of them from someone who's 18, yeah. 18 and all with 18 knockers at the top of the game. Yeah, and stopping people who are at a decent level as yeah. well. It's not the many things he's blown over. So, no. yeah, that's one I'm really looking forward to. Um, Dan, if we can move on and we're going to talk about some undercard fights yeah, um, that are taking place this weekend. One I want to quickly touch point on because with the greatest of respect, it's not probably the most glamorous undercard fight. But Jordan Thompson is someone who really intrigues me. He carries power. He's kind of got that David Hay look about him. Mm. He's a cruiserweight. He seems to be stopping a lot of kids at the moment. He takes on, uh, I think it's Dunkar or Kunkar. <laughs> I'm really yeah, sorry. But, 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 um, Vasil Dunkar, I think he's, it was uh, 11, 11, 11 wins, 5 11 losses, 1 draw. Isn't? Yeah, yeah, you say it better than me. Um, so, for the reason alone, being Jordan Thompson, I want to see how far it can go. What do you make of this fight this weekend? Have you seen much of Jordan Thompson? I've seen a couple of fights, obviously, on, on the undercard. Like you said, he has got that young David Hay look about him, that cruiserweight yeah. swagger, the knockouts. Um, this is a slight step up as such, if we would say then, it's, it's 11, 11 and 5 guy, more international level. It's going to be, obviously, it's about moving him slow, isn't it? Do you mean certain levels? Certain, it's how quickly do you move these prospects? The cruiserweight division can be, is, is a dangerous division at times. Do you mean we are, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of lot of top fights in, of British fighters at the cruiserweight division. But I think this may potentially a step up, but I think that Jordan Thompson is going to come up with a with a stoppage win, to be fair, against uh, Basil Dunkar. Yeah, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me, but I'll be really interested to see Jordan Thompson on Saturday. Um, another fight I want to talk to you about, Dan, uh, takes place, I believe it's in Belfast. And for me, I think this is the fight of the weekend, by the way. Um, Tyrone McKenna takes on Chris Jenkins. Yeah. Now, Chris Jenkins is obviously, um, he's your countryman. Yeah, he's he's not, he, he lives not far. Chris, yeah, Chris lives not far from me. I'm, I've I've known I've known Chris for a long time myself personally. Um, yeah. I've done some sparring with Chris as well previously when he was an amateur uh, back in the day. Uh, but yeah, really good fight. I mean, Tyrone McKenna's been in with the best as well. Really, as such, he's been in. With, his last fight was against Pro Gray as well. As you said, it could steal the show, but it's a type, it's it's that type of fight. Depends what Chris Jenkins turns up. I mean, Chris has been there, the top of the game. He's been he's been British and Commonwealth champion. I say top of the game, but the top of the domestic domestic scene. Then McKenna has been in at recently, but he has lost against Pro Gray, O'Hara Davis, and Jack Cattrall. Obviously, they're big big names. Jack Cattrall, yeah. would you call him the uncrowned, undisputed champion? I mean, that's another debate that we could have that could go on for yeah. for a long time. But he's been in there with these guys, obviously earlier on in their career. But he, he obviously went in against Pro Gray. Last time he lost again, he lost that fight. Obviously, Pro Gray had been in with Josh Taylor and stuff in the Super Series. But if Chris can do the sit, do it, fight his fight, box off the jab, not get caught with a headbutt because that's Chris's style. He gets end up gets in and he gets cut. You may see um, a Chris Jenkins win, I think, by uh, by points. Chris, I, he hasn't got the power as such to stop you, but he if he's on his game and he's moving well, he can box and box to a points victory. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't dispute that at all, Dan. I think Chris Jenkins is very, very capable. I think Tyrone McKenna 
is a very, very tough individual. Mm. I just think it's got all the makings of being the fight of the weekend because both guys are capable of beating each other. The best yeah. Chris Jenkins beats Tyrone McKenna for yeah. me. But it's if he is at his best. And for me, I'm really sorry, Dan. I just think that day has been and gone. And I think yeah. that Tyrone McKenna will win a very good and entertaining fight. But it's one I'm really looking forward to this he's weekend. He's had a stop-start career as well, and he, Chris. I mean, yeah. he's had cuts and injuries and fights yeah. are going to be made promoter politics have stopped big fights when he had the British title against Connor and things like that. Do you know I mean so yeah. there's been a lot of things that have gone against Chris, but I'm going you're going McKenna points, I'm going Chris Jenkins points. We'll see who uh yeah. we'll see who gets it on that uh, on Sat on the weekend. I'm not wrong often but I'll be happy <laughs> if, if, if Jenkins uh has an upset there and wins yeah. absolutely done. Um now in this part of the video we talk about a fight that has went under the radar this weekend. Now the viewers are probably going to think that I'm crazy saying that this is under the radar, but it has been mm. quietly out there. It's not been massively uh, publicised. No. And that fight I'm talking about is the return of Michael Conlon in Belfast this weekend. He takes on Miguel Mariaga, well known in the States for being in with fighters like Vasily Lomachenko, Oscar Valdez, etc. Fight that you're looking forward to, Dan? Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting to see what Michael Conlon comes back. Do you mean Michael Conlon? He's come off. Obviously, he was. He talked. He done the Olympics. Do you mean he had a big new media following after the Olympics. So obviously, he spoke out that am about amateur boxing, etc. At the Olympics, then he came into the pro game. He was on a great run, and then he came up against Lee Wood in the last in the last fight. And in fairness, Lee Wood is on that Cinderella story run at the minute, isn't he? Um, and obviously, Conlon got caught and. Was it tiredness? But he was. It was a great punch by Lee with the but put it, put Conan put cut knock Conan out and finish finish the fight. But since then, Conan hasn't said much. Do you mean he's been very very quiet? He's kept himself to himself. The fight's taken place over in Ireland, which hasn't had much media coverage in as such compared to the last yeah. fight he had. He's taken on a very very good fighter, like you said, who's been in with the best in America, one of the best to ever lace up a pair of gloves in Lomachenko. Yes, he lost to them, but he has he has shared to the ring with them. But it's the big question for me is what Michael Conlon comes back. How does yeah. Michael Conlon come back from that loss? Is yeah. has something been taken away from him? Has that spark been taken away from him? Because some people who when they take their first loss or potentially take their first KO, they're not the same, they're not the same fighter, but other fighters come back totally different and and raring to go. So it is it is intriguing to see what Michael Conlon will come back. To fight yeah. on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I totally agree with you. For me, it's a very good fight to come back to. I think if you're coming off a loss, Miguel Mariaga, he's been there, he's been in with the best. So it's a good it's a good fight to see where you're at, um, especially if you're coming back after that knockout loss. I've went back and watched that fight, and you know the way that Conlon put Wood down in the first round, I think he maybe went a little bit hell for leather after yeah. that in the second round. Not making any excuses because at the end of the day, a fight's 12 rounds. It's mm. it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So I do think tiredness caught Michael Conlon out that night. I think Michael Conlon um, at his best. And if he's super fit, he beats Lee Wood. I think it's too yeah. skillful for him. But again, we could say maybe would have, could have, should have in boxing. At the end of the day, Lee Wood got the win. He stopped him and congratulations to him. But it is a fight that has went under the radar, Dan, because... Usually a Michael Conlon fight, as you know, it's 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 everywhere. That's and massive. It's he's, a big, yeah, he's not me in Madison Square Gardens on St Patrick's Day or all the Irish are supporting yeah. him. But it's literally there's there's nothing. There's been not even any sort of he hasn't done any social media sort of stuff. He's been I know obviously following a few fighters on Instagram and stuff. They've been out in Spain and they training and things, but not much on him. There's not much on his social media. He's, he's kept very very yeah. quiet. No, nothing said about it. I mean the Conlons are good talkers. Do you mean they they can yeah. normally sell a fight? They can they they talk they talk the talk and normally walk the walk. But there's literally nothing nothing from them. So I don't know whether he's doing the thing where he's coming in very quiet this time because obviously he spoke a lot on the Lee Wood fight and obviously it didn't go the way that he that he thought it was going to go. But I don't know whether he's just trying a different approach, just keeping himself to himself to to rebuild. Ready for because that fight is happening again from isn't it? There's gonna be that big Lee Wood rematch as long as Lee Wood comes through his next fight. But I just think that's the reason what it is. I think he's trying to go back, keep quiet, come back, get that notch that next win up on the board, and then move forward from there. 
yeah, supports a great team also, does Michael Conlon. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that, that sums up this this show for this week, guys. Um, so we are looking at Dalton Smith against Samuel Mason, um, Virgil Ortiz, Michael McKinson, great fight. Um, Jordan Thompson on the undercard, Tyrone McKenna versus um, oh Dan, the names are running away from me because there's too Chris many. Jenkins. Tyrone McKenna versus Chris Jenkins. Yep, and finally the return of Michael Conlon. Everyone, thanks so much for watching our weekly preview. Subscribe to all our social platforms and we'll be back to speak to you again with another weekly review next week. Take care and thank you. Thanks, Greg. Bye, guys.